Hey, hey. Happy Women's History Month. I'm Jess and it's Sunday, so it is time for trivia. <laughs> and in celebration of Women's History Month, the trivia is going to be all women focused. And also along with that, since I don't think Black History Month is long enough, the women that I will be highlighting are all going to be Black women, um, whether they're in the United States or in other places throughout the world. So that is the trivia uh, topic. Now I am gonna have different topics throughout here as we go along. And hopefully there'll be a lot of key learnings. A lot of my trivia is really focused on business, but with this, I wanted to really bring in some other things as well. So you'll notice that there are different topics today. And I do want to highlight that International Women's Day is actually on March 8th. So that is going to be a key highlight. Let me quickly share myself out here. Give me a second. But those are kind of the updates for March. March is all about women. Um, I'm kind of surprised that <laughs> Mother's Day isn't in the month of March as well, because March is the month just in celebration of all of the women. So we'll get started here. I am sharing my screen. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Let me do this. Okay. Okay. So I am going to get started as soon as I see some more people come in. So I'll give it a minute because I just shared myself out. Okay, so, and again, the things I want to highlight today are just, again, March is Women's History Month, and then International Women's Day is coming up here on March 8th, which is Tuesday, so I'm super excited about that. A lot of things with my company, we're doing some celebrations, some different women's panels with folks in the company, and all that good stuff. And so a lot of the topics today are going to be focused on business related things. But I also throw in some uh, different areas that are typically women when you think about it. So things like fashion, sometimes even TV. Um, so I will be throwing in some of that stuff too. And hello, Barry. Welcome in. I think, Barry, you may be the only one today just getting started. But I was just saying that March is all about women. So uh, we've got March being Women's History Month and then also International uh, Women's Day is coming up on March 8th, which is a Tuesday. So I am super excited and we have some different panels throughout my company where leadership will be talking and giving tips and things like that. And just really a good time to just lift and uplift other women. Um, so that is what I'll be talking about today with the trivia. Now, I do want to highlight that it's not all going to be U.S. <laughs> uh, focused. And it's going to be um, a mixture of Black women from the U.S. Um, and other places in the world. So I am going to go ahead and get started since I see you in here. I don't know how long this trivia will go, but I don't have too many questions this time. So we'll see. <laughs> And hello, Ben. Nice to see you here as well. Cool, cool. Okay. Well, we got two players so far. Maybe a third one. I see people in here. But um, let's go ahead and get started with the trivia. Now, the first thing I want you guys to do is guess the topic just based on this image. What do you think the topic will be for us today? So we see here 
what looks like a crown, a pink crown, and a country. So if you know your geography, you may guess the country, which may help guess the topic. So I'm interested, not really a right or wrong answer here. There kind of is, but I will let you guys guess what you think the topic is, and then we'll move into trivia with the first question. So what do you think? Pink crown plus some country. I don't know where it is, right? What country is it? That may help you guess. And if you just can't think of it, just let me know in the comment and we'll, I will tell you and then we can move on. <laughs> Um, Ben N says, Nephilim Angel, now you guess, Tide Pods is in here, Women's History Month is a feminist month to me, really, why do you think that? I mean, it depends on your definition of feminist, but yes, I mean, we definitely want to celebrate women. Why do you think that, Tide Pods? And I don't see any guesses for what this is, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you so we can get into the trivia. But I think it's great that we have a month to celebrate specifically women and our contributions to society in a very male-dominated world, right? So the topic for this is actually going to be, um, the majority of the questions will be about Nigerians, or I'm sorry, Haitians. <laughs> So this is a map of Haiti, and then the crown represents royalty. So it'll be Haitians and royalty. So that's kind of a hint for you. This is the topic. Throughout, you'll have other opportunities to guess what the topic will be. And I see comments in here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Brian. Hi, the woman who doesn't exist. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move forward with the first question. Let's see how we do today. The first question should be an easy one, depending on if you were born in the U.S. This Haitian American actress and model famously starred in the hit TV show, The Jamie Foxx Show. Who remembers The Jamie Foxx Show? I was young, but I remember it. <laughs> um, so we're looking for... <clears throat> this Haitian American actress, and she was also a model. That might be a hint. She famously starred in a hit TV show, The Jamie Foxx Show. Is it A, Alicia Wainwright, B, Bianca Lawson, C, Sandra Prosper, or D, Garcelle Beauvoir? Beauvoir. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, is it A, Alicia Wainwright? B, Bianca Lawson, three, or C, Sandra Prosper, or D, Garcelle. I'm just going to say Garcelle. Uh, let's see. I, okay, I see some things coming through the chat here. So it looks like some folks know. The woman who doesn't exist to you is saying Garcelle. C. Oh, D, you mean D. Yes, I got you. I got you, the woman who doesn't exist. <laughs> Brian Lynn is also saying, see, like the woman who doesn't exist first did. Is that on purpose, Brian? Do you think it's C, Sandra Prosper? We got C and D. So it's one of these two so far. Let's see if any other answers come through. I'm going to give it my five seconds here. Five, four, three, two, one. So it looks like it's coming down to C, Sandra Prosper or D. Garcelle Bouveau. I'm just gonna say Bouveau. That sounds more of a Haitian last name, right? That may be a good hint. Ben and Jamie Foxx is cheesy, funny, not really funny. <laughs> you know what? It would be funny to like go back and watch some of his shows, but the answer is definitely Garcelle. Beautiful woman. She was a model as well as an actress. So Lately, I've seen her on the show called The Real. It's kind of like The View, but with a different spin on it. They talk a lot about celebrity and just girly topics. So, but anyway, Garcelle was the answer. 
But yes, Ben, it would be interesting to go back and watch some of the shows to see if I actually think it's funny. Because I, I get you, sometimes it's funny to kids or maybe it's a little cheesy, but um, you watch it later in life and you're like, why did I think this was funny? <laughs> All right, so this question may trip a couple of you up. Let's see who knows their history, and in this case, world history. Because again, this is Haiti, right? All right, so in 1811, this woman was given the title of queen upon the creation of the kingdom of Haiti. This was following her husband, Henry I, fighting for Haitian independence from France. In Haiti, they got their independence in 1804. So this was like just after that. She was seen as a pillar and force behind the great hero, Henry I. What is this woman's name? Is it A, Adelina Levicu? B, Olive Soluque? I'm, I don't speak French, so I'm probably butchering the names. C, Marie Louis Christophe? Or D, Levine Divine? Let's see here. The woman who doesn't exist to you says 1804. Yes. Yep, yep. So that's when they got their independence from France. Um, it's it's crazy to see some of the history. I was learning it for this trivia, how much France, how much money the French got out of Haiti for them to get their independence, keep their independence. And like they were taking a lot of things from the country, you know, a lot of their riches, like coffee, you know, back in the day, right? Sugar, sugar cane, and all these different natural resources that the Haitians had, the French was just, taking from Haiti and they had to ultimately um, give them money for their independence and keep that as well. It's just, huh, it is a lot. So surprisingly, we don't learn this here in the U.S. Um, Benin says, Natawa, none of them. There is one of them. We don't know that one. <laughs> All right. Well, I will give the answer in five, four, three, two, one. One. Let's find out who the answer is. And the woman who doesn't exist just came in with Marie Louise. C. Let's see if that's right. The woman who doesn't exist to you, is that your final answer? It is in fact Marie Louise Christophe. And what's interesting about her life is that she did marry Henry the First. He was one who fought against the French to gain independence, but shortly after that, he did he did die. I believe he, I can't remember if he committed suicide or if he actually died on the battlefield, but he passed away. She had, I believe, three children and had to go into like hiding for a while. And then after they got their independence, she was declared queen once they created the kingdom of Haiti. So it was really interesting. At one point she moved and lived in Great Britain. So she actually made an influence there, but she was really seen in Haiti as a pillar. Um, you know, one of the women really standing and supporting these men that were fighting for the independence. So really um, positively seen in light of Haitians and also uh, Great Britons as well. And if you look her up on YouTube, there's a couple of different documentaries about her. So good job, uh, the woman who doesn't exist to you. All right, so we're gonna go deeper into royalty here. And I see some comments. France thinks they're smarter. And then the woman who doesn't exist at C. She said, you're agreeing with me? Okay, Mata, Matawawa, King Mata, okay. And I don't know who that is, but then. <laughs> so this woman was the Princess Imperial of Haiti. Now, it was from the years 1842 to July 1883. This was the eldest daughter of Emperor Faustin I of Haiti and Adelina Levicu. And if you don't get these, we are having other topics, so don't worry. <laughs> this is kind of tough. Again, this woman was the Princess Imperial of Haiti. 
from November 1842 to July 1883, was the eldest daughter of Emperor Faustin, which is a name I just learned about, um, and Adelina Levick. Hopefully that sounded better, maybe a little more French. <laughs> All right, so is the answer A, Marie Michelle Levecou, B, Olive Solecou, C, Celestine Marie Francois, or D, Levine Divine? <laughs> and don't laugh at me with my name pronunciations, I'm trying. Is it A, Marie Michelle Levecou, B, Olive Solecou, C, Celestine Marie Francois, or D, Levine Divine? What do you guys think? Ben is said, I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Brian is saying D, Levine Divine. And I'm gonna give it five seconds before I give you the answer. Let's see if Brian is correct with his answer of D. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's find out what the answer is. Let's find out if Brian is indeed correct with Levine Divine. Okay, it is actually Olive Solicu. Um, so Brian, quick fact for you. I actually threw in that name there because I just needed a filler for D. Divine is incorrect. I made that up. I made up Levine Divine because I just needed something to fill in these spots, <laughs> to be honest with you, but it was Olive Solecu. <laughs> All right, so let's see if you guys can get this one. We know that the first one was a map of Haiti and a crown. Guess the topic. We see a map, we see some lashes, and we see a camera. What do you think the topic is for this one? Brian says, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you, you guys know, if you, you, you guys have been with me on the trivia, so sometimes I will throw in a random name just to catch someone, right? It is very tough. Those are some very tough uh, questions. And I'm really surprised uh, the woman who doesn't exist, you did very well in that category. So like a shout out for you, quick hand clap, great job. Because again, I just learned a lot of this stuff. Uh, ben said they messed up all the names. We don't find each other. Hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult now, especially here in the US. It's hard to kind of know our origins because we don't, we just don't have that history. It was taken from us, if that's what you're referring to. Hi, Cassandra. Happy Sunday. Welcome in. So we are right in the middle of trivia. We are guessing the topic. We just had um, a time with the Haitian history. So we just learned about some of these folks right here. Lovely women. So we started with the Haitian American actress, Garcelle Bobo, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> then we learned about Marie Louis Christophe, um, kind of the woman behind the pioneer, Henry I, who helped gain independence for Haiti in 1804. And then we also learned about a little bit about Olive Solokou. Uh, she was the princess imperial of Haiti. And there were a couple of other princesses as well that I just didn't highlight here. All right, so I'm not seeing any guesses, so I am going to give it five seconds. Five four, three, two, one, because I know there's a little bit of delay with StreamYard. But the topic here, we see a map of Nigeria, we see lashes, we see a camera. It's actually going to be all women related to the fashion world. <laughs> and they all are going to be Nigerian in this section. So let's move forward here. Now, this Nigerian American actress, if you watch the show Insecure, you're going to get this one. This Nigerian American actress and comedian is best known for her role in the television series Insecure, for which she has been nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award and three NAACP Image Awards. And 
for Insecure, if you watch this show, if you know who I'm talking about, this is the person that plays Molly Carter in this show. That could be a nice hint. Is it A, Uzo Aduba? B, Chioma Aduba? C, Yvonne Orji? Or D, Celine Orji? Again, I'm gonna replay that one. This Nigerian American actress and comedian is best known for her role in the television hit series, Insecure, for which she has been nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award and three NAACP Image Awards. Is it A, Uzo Aduba, B, Chioma Aduba, C, Yvonne Orji, or D, Selene Orji? I don't have a Nigerian accent, but I'm trying. <laughs> Are you welcome, the one who doesn't exist? She did a great job. Uh, learning about computers. Okay, good for you, Ben. Uh, beautiful, yes, and this is not the person. Just a quick hint. The person pictured in the center is not the person I'm referring to. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give away the answer. I don't see answers just yet, but countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see who the answer is. Thank you, Ben. You're so kind. I know it. You forgot it, Brian. Okay, do you want to take a guess? Let's real quick give you a chance to take a guess before we see what the answer is. I think you will be surprised. <laughs> Miss Four Roller, welcome in. You are guessing B. Okay, Miss Four Roller, we're going to see if the answer is B. And I see Barry is guessing A, Uza Aduba. And the woman who doesn't exist is guessing C, Yvonne Orji. Barry, I caught your replay this morning, so I couldn't be as alive. Oh, Barry, you're everywhere. You're like, I think you have a twin or something. I don't know how you do it. All right, the answer is Yvonne Orji. She plays Molly Carter on the show Insecure. Now, Issa Rae is the woman that was pictured in the center, right? But Yvonne Orji is the one that plays Molly Carter that I'm referencing. So she has been nominated for multiple awards because of her acting in that show. She is also a comedian as well. So that was the person I was referring to. <laughs> now, Uzo Aduba, I do want to make a quick call out for her because she has been known to play in the show, if I can remember it. It is a show about like women prisoners. And uh, it was like really popular HBO. Let me see if I can quickly find it so I can share that. Uzo Aduba, if you remember, put it in the chat. Before I move on, I do want to highlight her because she did play in a hit show. Yes, okay, Orange is the New Black is the name of the show that the other woman played in that some of you guys guessed. So she played as Crazy Eyes, if you know that show. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to move on here. All right. Oh, good job, some of you. I think the woman who doesn't exist got that one. So really great job, everybody. Okay, so let's see what the next question is. This is a fun one. Let's see if you guys know your beauty. Maybe the guys won't know, but we'll see. <laughs> this Nigerian model and beauty queen, hint, beauty queen, who's crowned Miss World in 2001. She was the first indigenous African. Indigenous African. That means that she most likely did not come from South Africa, uh, which we know is not, or is not always highlighting the, you know, real African people, right? She was the first indigenous African to win Miss World. <clears throat> Let's see if we remember. So is it A, Deshauna Barber? B, Tony and Singh, C, Layla Lopez, or D, Agbani Darego. Again, I'm gonna say that one again. This Nigerian model and beauty queen was crowned in Miss World in 2001. The first real African to win Miss World. 
Is it A, Deshana Barber, B, Tony N. Singh, C, Layla Lopez, or D, Agbani Dorego? Let's see if you guys can recall and think back to 2001 if you watch Miss World. Um, this particular person has done a lot within her own country as well. So she has, she was one that not only did she go on to, to I think she lives in New York now, or she, at some point she moved back to New York, but she, she actually, fun fact, uh, joined Ford Models and another modeling agency that I will share once I show who it is. All right, let's see. I see that Cassandra is guessing D, Agbani Dorego. Ms. Roller also guessing D, Agbani Dorego. And Barry Johnson is saying, I am guessing D as well. <laughs> You're guessing? That's okay, Barry. Hello, Mr. 100 Rounds. Nice to see you. Peace, love, blessings. How's it I hope everyone's safe and may the blessings from God. Oh, thank you. Hey, Powell Lindo. Brian is guessing D. Benin says, no idea. I, and I don't lie. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay, Ben. You can guess as well. And Paolo Lindo is coming in here with D. All right. Got some good answers. It seems like everyone is saying D here. So let's find out what the answer is. All right. You guys were right on that one. You guys know your beauty queens. And then I know there were a couple of guesses in there, but yes, it was like Bonnie DeRego. And so she actually joined Ford Models as well as Trump Modeling Agency. I didn't realize that until today, but she did join those agencies. And um, she's had a really good career and she's also contributed in different ways to the country. Um, I think she was like an advisor on one of the different boards in Nigeria as well. So she's been doing some great things and was the first African beauty queen Miss World recognized. All right, so great job. I'm gonna shout out everybody. Paolo Lindo came in here, guest right, Miss Full Roller. Um, Barry, you also guessed that one right. Great job. And Cassandra. Go guys, you guys know your history. All right, I'm gonna move on here. Let's see if we remember. This is one of the names I have had in two, two of my trivias. <laughs> so think back and if there's a name that seems familiar to you, it may be the right one. So this Nigerian billionaire businesswoman is involved in the fashion, oil, real estate, and printing industries. She is the group managing director of the Rose Sharon Group and is listed as the second, number two, most powerful woman in Africa. Who is it? Is it A, Follow Runs Joe Alakija? B, Nonzi Akonjo Ewela? Don't laugh at me for these name pronunciations. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself too, it's okay. Um, C, Jessica Ellis? Or D, Ebum Sesu? All right, so this Nigerian billionaire businesswoman is involved in the fashion, oil, real estate, and printing industries. She is the second most powerful woman in Africa. Is it A, Folorunsu Alakija? <laughs> B, Nozi Akonjo Awela? C, Jessica Ellis? Or D, Abun Sesu? Let's see what guys are saying in here. Benin says, my memory sucks though. That's okay, we're learning. This one you may recall if you've been to some of my other trivias. Paolindo says, yeah, she is pure fire. I think you're talking about the model that we just saw. That is true, she's very beautiful. The woman who doesn't exist says, it's the name that made me guess it. Ah, very smart. Very, very smart. Paolo no says B on this one. Nonzi Akonjo Awelia. Q Nini. Hey, how are you, Nini? Uh, Ms. Full Roller says B, question mark. Hmm. Is it B? Q Nini blocks is guessing C. Because, you know, why not throw in a Jessica in there? Because Jessica's were the best, right? <laughs> Ms. Full Roller, 
Miss Perwaral, I didn't know, but that name sounds so Nigerian, that name. Ah, Barry is guessing B as well. And I know Barry has been to, a, I think, all of my trivia. So we are going to see Barry. Brian is guessing B as well. Kunini is going to change it up and say D. Cassandra has also been to a number of my trivias, and she's guessing A. All right, let's see what the answer is, guys. I see a lot of great responses. Paolino says, sounds so Nigerian. He's going to say B. Mr. Round, Mr. Round and Round says, no clue. That's all right. In five, four, three, two, one, let's find out. It is Falarun So Alakija. She is the group managing director of the Rose of Sharon group. And she is in multiple industries and running things in Africa, right? <laughs> so I did use a different picture for her last time, but this is the same woman, Falaronso Alakija. She is the second most powerful person in Africa and is a billionaire businesswoman. I talked about her in a few other trivias, and it sounds like Cassandra was the one that remembered. You might have a really good memory, Cassandra. Good job. <laughs> ben says, I'm hiding. They want me big bearded. I don't know what you're talking about, Ben. What show? What are you talking about? C sounds so New Yorker. Really? Jessica Ellis? I don't know, but trying to do a quick analyzation to guess. <laughs> I love that, Miss Bow Roller. <laughs> Process of elimination. That's why I do it your trivia half the time. I'm like, it can't be this one. It can't be that one. You had a great trivia last night, and that's exactly what I tried to do is process of elimination. <laughs> Maybe I'm shy, but the world is dangerous. Yep, I couldn't remember. Barry couldn't remember. Brian. <laughs> Kunini Sam miss y'all. Billionaire sounds awful. Billionaire sounds good to me. Miss Fur Roller said those are the ones I missed. All right, let's move on here. Quick fact, because I thought a couple of folks would guess Nanzi Akonjo Awelia. So this is the most powerful or known to be the most powerful woman in Africa because she is the finance minister and foreign minister for the West African country. So she has a, she's managing a GDP of 502 billion. Um, and where she came from in her background, she's an economist. So she's actually been serving, um, I don't know why I put 20, well, yeah, no, that's right, that's right. So she is serving now as the director general of the World Trade Organization. So she's a very powerful, very powerful woman in Africa. And that's why she's number one. And she's a billionaire, right? Because we know billionaires, billionaires run the world. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I meant Maz, look, look y'all. Wait, what? I didn't know. I don't know what you're saying, Kiyonini. Learning about gardening sounds good to me. Ben is saying, what? What? <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to guess the topic. So we talked about Haitian royalty, right? And after this, I'm going to go through and just highlight some of the things we learned today. But we talked about Haitian royalty, women. We talked about Nigerians on the move, right? In the fashion and beauty world. What's the topic now? We got a group of women or a group of women. We've got some dollar signs and currency signs on the left and the right. The woman who doesn't exist says beautiful trivia. Hmm. Paolino says money. Money, 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 money. Money. Okay. <laughs> Let's find out what it is, right? <laughs> so you guys are right. You guys are right. Beautiful women. Money. What's it about? Well, this part of the trivia, we're going to talk about business solely. So women in business, right? Women making money in business. So we're going to talk about it. You may see some entrepreneurs in here. You may see some big influencers in here. We're going to talk about it. 
Kiyonini says Bitcoin. Yes, you saw the Bitcoin sign. So I'm not going to be talking about Bitcoin in this one, but um, Miss Fur Roller says shopping. No. <laughs> Compost pile makes the garden. I don't know what Ben is talking about, but I appreciate you hanging out with us. And the woman who doesn't exist says entrepreneurs. Yes, Paolo no bit dollars. <laughs> I want to talk about Bitcoin in a bit. Kia Nini, Nini, if you want to stay in here and I'll talk to you a little bit about Bitcoin. We talked about it in one of your uh, chats, but we'll, we can talk about it after. So. This one, I don't know if many people know this, but this term is used to describe all people of color in the workplace. This term and acronym is more commonly used outside of the US, right? So is it A, B-I-P-O-C? Is it B, P-O-C? C, non-white? Or D, W-O-C? Again, this term is used to describe all people of color in the workplace. This term and acronym is more commonly used outside of the United States. Is it A, B I P O C, B P O C, C non white, or D W O C? We'll see what you guys think. Mr. 100 Round says stocks. Nope, that's not what your view is about. <laughs> ben says it's not the topic. Sell things from your garden. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Jessica. Ben may be a troll. It's you know what? It's cool. Ben Ben comes in here. Ben, if your trip, if this trivia makes you happy, brightens your day, come on in, hang out. I'm good with that. Don't like, don't block anyone. I think maybe Miss Four Rollers are mod and Powell and Doe. It's cool. You can come in here and chit chat with us. Um, how Linda was saying, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> but then money is the topic. Uh huh. Kianini is saying A. Okay, B I P O C. We got an A from Nini. Ben, thanks for info. Those not specific topic, right, Miss Full Roller? Brian is saying A. B I P O C. The woman who doesn't exist to you says B, and Mr. 100 Round says A. So it sounds like we're saying A and we're saying B in here. Let's see if there's any other responses in. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I see Paolo Lindo saying Black International People, O C. So I say A. Okay. And Cassandra is coming in with A. All right, let's see what the answer is. Yes, everyone has said A, B, I, P, O, C is correct. You're correct. Now, I want to talk about this because B, I, P, O, C means Black, Indigenous, um, and all other people of color, right? But here in the U.S., I haven't really seen this acronym used as much. I see what's more so used is POC, which I talked about in another trivia. So I wanted to bring this here because you may you may see POC for a lot of US-based companies when they're talking about diversity, right? They're talking about people of color. But when you look at places with operations in multiple countries, like for example, Canada, their diversity is going to be looking different. Or Australia, their diversity goals are going to look different. They want to make sure that they're really including indigenous peoples, right? So you'll see this term used more, B-I-P-O-C, to include, you know, black, indigenous, and all other people of color to really be more inclusive, right? Try to get that across with this image there. Very good job, everybody. Let me look back and see. I know Mr. 100 Rounds. Got that one right. I saw Paolindo come in here and get that one right, which I thought you would, Paolindo. That's awesome. Um, Cassandra, Cassandra got that right. You're doing great. And then Miss Four Roller came in here and said POC, which is not totally incorrect, but for this, when you take it out of the US context, BIPOC is what you're gonna wanna go, go with whenever you're talking about people of color. And I see here Barry Johnson said, nice. 
and I can't remember Barry, I think you might have gotten that one right too. I'm trying to go back and see. I don't know. I don't know if Barry got that one or not, but I think great job, everyone. I saw a lot of responses for A. So you know who you are, you know if you got it right. Great job. Okay, so moving on here. Let's see. Okay, no worries, Nini. All right, this woman is the founder and CEO of the world's first plant-based feminine care line, Honey Pot, which she started with a $21,000 loan. Very difficult for her to get funding, right? In general, it's very hard for Black people and particularly Black women to get funding for businesses. But we can get money for, you know, things like student loans. They just passing that out. But for business, businesses, it's very difficult. <laughs> um, so it's now worth, and excuse that error there, but it's now worth well over $20 million, this brand. I think a lot of us may have heard of Honey Pot, may even use it. Let's see if we know the name behind it. Is it A, Beatrice Dixon? B, Pat McGrath? C, Melissa Butler? Or D, Terry Gioma? Is it A, Beatrice Dixon? B, Pat McGrath? C, Melissa Butler? Or D, Terry Gioma? What do you guys think? We're gonna find out. I see a couple responses. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, um, then be respectful. We're all being respectful in here, but I feel you. You're welcome to stay in here, chit chat with us. Um, I don't know if I missed any comments, um, but I didn't see anything. Uh, Melissa Butler, Paolindo is saying. Okay, Paolindo, let's see. Oh, Kanini, spreading the love. Mr. 100 Rounds is saying A, Beatrice Dixon. And Barry is saying A as well. The men are coming in here. Okay. I was curious. I, wouldn't, I didn't think the men would actually know. So I don't know if you're guessing or if you guys actually are just quick getting these answers in. Cassandra is also saying A. Okay, we'll see. Then in Jessica knows I'm on her side. Yep. Brian is saying A. Miss Four Roller saying A. Beatrice Dixon, that name is like a promoter, dishwasher. <laughs> oh, Linda was saying the name is a promoter of dishwasher. Um, let's see. Miss Full Roller has got the shades on. How Lindo, A, dishwashers promote. So everybody went with A. Let's find out what the answer is. It is Beatrice Dixon. Yes. And so I kind of gravitated to her story. She actually shared one time that she thought of the recipe for her feminine care line. So she has a lot of cleansing products which are completely plant-based for us women. And she, like, it came to her in a dream. She said her ancestors sent her this dream with all of the ingredients. I remember hearing that. And there was a lot of controversy with her brand because it was marketed as, you know, black women, um, black woman business, product for black women. And so you had, I saw stories actually of white women actually going online and rating her products really badly because they were completely against the messaging, which is just, yeah, support black women. This is a black woman owned product and it's, it's like buy black for black people, you know, it's that thinking. So very interesting enough, Black women really came in to support her, gave raving reviews, bought her products. Now it's very difficult if you go to find some of her products in a Target or Walmart sometimes. It can be a challenge. Uh, but yes, she has really grown that from a 21000 loan to this being a 
well over $20 million business. I did see different uh, sources for the net worth of that company, but it sounds like it's 20 million. So, and she's also grown to having more and more products. So an even bigger product line. So we'll see probably plenty to come from her. Let me look at these comments. Total guess why I have heard of the brand before. Yes, I have used it. I um, do use her products on occasion. Uh, the woman who doesn't exist to you, A. So you came in with A as well. Paola knows laughing. Melissa Butler sounds like a woman into the marketing of Honey Pot. Or Honey Pot, sorry. Brian is congratulating everyone. Hello, Harold. Welcome in. They were also mad when she got backed by Target. Yes, Barry. They were... People were really mad and it's like, it's interesting whenever you say like, this is a black owned business or we're supporting black business. Other people get really mad, but it's like, but you're, we're supporting your businesses naturally. You don't have to say as a white person, you don't have to say, oh, support white businesses. And it was women. So women should understand like when women say support a woman owned business, it's not to say you're not going to support other businesses. And I think in the black community, we support every business, right? Um, but we want to highlight and be proud of it. It's very interesting that dynamic that people only hear, oh, it doesn't include us. Everything includes you. <laughs> That's why we go to TV and we see only certain people. <laughs> It's just mind boggling, but that is her situation. But you know what? She got through it. People came out to support her. Obviously, I'm not saying every white woman was against her brand, but there was a large number that it got a lot of media attention where they were just coming out and <laughs> coming against this product. And it's, it's actually pretty good. And I like it because I'm vegan. And it's like I've been implementing more vegan products into my life. So anyway, moving on here. Um, Ms. Full Roller is saying, wow, though I can't really say that I'm surprised. Right, Ms. Full Roller? Uh, they ain't mad when they get our dollars. Exactly. So not mad when we're sharing our dollars, but when we're trying to highlight Black businesses, it's just like, what? All they're hearing is, you know, sometimes, oh, it doesn't include me. But it's just a part of that privilege where it's everything else includes you. <laughs> if, if we were included, right, we wouldn't have that need to say black on this or woman on this. I would love to see the day where we don't even have to say that. But in this world, we do. So it's so in a part of our story too. the fact that I put in here twenty one thousand dollar loan. She had the struggle as many business women do is particularly black business women with getting that funding, getting investors. So very interesting. All right, moving on here. Let's continue. Right, Harold, I love that you're saying that. I appreciate you so much, Harold. If the product is good, why not support it? Yes, that's exactly the point, right? I'm not gonna buy a bad product. And that's the issue. It was like a great product, but people didn't like it because of the marketing messages of it being a black woman owned business targeted to black women. People. These women were feeling like, oh, well, it doesn't include us where we're going to bash this product. However, I've used it. It's, it's a good product. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But moving on here, another beauty brand that is vegan. <laughs> this woman started a vegan queen beauty line in 2013 after becoming incredibly frustrated with the beauty industry. She created a clean and more inclusive beauty line. I think she, I think it started with like 40 different uh, colors for her, her lipsticks. Today, this Detroit based business, the lip bar has 18 employees, 2 million in funding, and is sold in about 500 target stores, which is huge across the nation, which is in the US. It has an estimated network of $2 million. Is this person a, Beatrice Lord, B, Pat McGrath, C, Melissa Butler, or D, Terry Igioma? Is it A, Beatrice Lord, B, Pat McGrath, C, Melissa Butler, or D, Terry Igioma? 
I see some comments in here. Paula No saying C, Melissa Butler. And Harold, you probably would have uh, liked the earlier session because it was a little bit easier. <laughs> um, exactly, Harold, however, existing attitudes is why this exists. It's, yes, Ms. Forwarder, for sure. Brian is saying A, Beatrice Lord. Paula No saying, I hope you are Melissa Butler. <laughs> Cassandra saying C, Melissa Butler as well. Let's see here. I'm going to show the answer. Sounds like it's either A, Beatrice Lord, or C, Melissa Butler. In five, four, three, two, one. That's what Rose was saying. I'm guessing C. <laughs> Mr. 100 Rounds is saying C. And Barry is also saying, guessing, C. Well, I guess we like the letter C today. What's up with that? Everybody's getting on the C bandwagon. No one wants to join Brian with A. What's up with that? These folks ain't loyal, Brian. They ain't loyal. <laughs> I'm kidding. So it's going to be either between A and C here, it sounds like. Let's see what the answer is. It is the beautiful, I just, this woman is stunning to me, the beautiful Melissa Butler. So I actually gravitated to her because she actually went on to the show Shark Tank. If you guys know that show where you have this group of, I think they're all mostly billionaires or basically they're, you know, these investors where they get together and People come in, they showcase their product, right? And they want to get some funding. They want to get some help. They want to um, broaden their their business. They want to kind of streamline it, make it bigger, bigger in scope. And they want some resources. And they go onto the show, Shark Tank, and they're marketing their product to them. Sometimes they bring in samples so they can try it. Well, this lady... She went on Shark Tank and um, <laughs> they pretty much laughed at her. They did not take it seriously at all. So she went from that to building out this business. And one of the articles I read about this lady, Melissa Butler, is that she at one point, she and her roommate, they had like a two bedroom setup and they were having some trouble making rent. And what they did was her and her roommate, which is now her creative director, and I think at the time was like, you know, working in the business with her in some capacity. She moved into their room. So they lived together in one room and then they airbnb out the other room. So that's a really interesting scenario. So you got your room, you got the girl, you, you guys are kind of living together in the bedroom and then you have someone with airbnb you know how that works someone just goes online they book the place and they're now your roommate right <laughs> so that's an interesting setup but that's what they had to do to make the rent i think she said this was like in 2013 when this happened right around when she started the business so um very interesting uh you know transition for her and she's really grown this great business um, and so what else did I want to say about her really quickly? I think there was something else I wanted to highlight on her, but overall, just the resiliency of this woman is phenomenal. Let's see here. <gasps> I'm following though. Oh my goodness. Harold came in and said D. Okay. So I will talk about the woman D. Terry Gioma is actually a woman who is an influencer here on YouTube, but also a teacher. She actually does have a business, but she shares stocks tips. So if you're interested in stock tips or how to invest in the stock market or how to get money, her model is to trade stocks or she gets money just on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis, literally just trading her stocks. And she does that from anywhere. She used to travel a ton. So I threw her name in here just because she was on my mind and I need another placeholder. So <laughs> Carol, not a bad guest. Um, I would definitely look her up if you're interested. And then I think we're going to be moving on to the last question here soon. Actually, no, I think we have two more questions. 
Melissa Butler, nice to meet you. She is a beauty, Paolindo, so I don't blame you for saying that at all. Uh, hey, JMJ, welcome in. Hey, you're laughing at us. <laughs> we brought him from Savage Scientist. He was always going with seeing another trivia. Yes, I actually need to share a video from Savage. I was trying to look for it yesterday. Um, I need to I need to get that video where he was basically sharing these different locations that are good for different cybersecurity jobs or IT jobs. Let's see here. Ella, hey, welcome in. I was checking the lip bar yesterday on IG. Isn't it great? I haven't now. This is when I haven't used the products. I have not used these products. I use Pat McGrath lipsticks. I know I've been a little bougie with the lipsticks, um, but I got hooked on her in New York. So I'm, I'm kind of hooked on her now, but I do plan on trying it. And I saw, I see just really good reviews reviews on that too. Thank you, Ms. Bo Roller. Yes, please hit the like button if you are enjoying the show. She is so Melissa Butler. <laughs> the woman who doesn't this says you follow her too. Nice. All right. Now this should be I'm hoping an easy one. I love this show. Scandal, one of the shows that this person has created. Now this is the first African American woman to create and executive produce a top 10 primetime television series with ABC's Grey's Anatomy. Um, she's also the woman behind Private Practice. And that should be edited, but she also produced Scandal, starring Carrie Washington. The Dartmouth graduate is arguably the most powerful Black woman in Hollywood. And I totally agree because I can't think of anyone more powerful than her i think before this woman it probably would have been oprah but she's definitely the most powerful like literally at one point she was pretty much everything that abc television in the evening had to broadcast it was literally her night i think thursday nights was like literally this person's world so i don't know if that will give you a little hint there but is this person who was the first African-American woman to create and execute and um, produce a top 10 primetime television series with a number of shows on ABC. There's a couple that are not mentioned here, like How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> that may be another hint. But is it A, Corvita Raven, B, Shonda Rhimes, C, Beverly Johnson, or D, Mara Brocka Hill? Is it A, Corvita Raven, B, Shonda Rhimes, C, Beverly Johnson, or D, Mara Brock Akil? Let's see who you guys think. <sighs> Powell Lindo is hilarious. <laughs> uh, the woman who doesn't exist to you, do you suggest we invest in Bitcoin while we have student loans? Hmm. <sighs> The woman who doesn't exist, I'm going to get to that because I have multiple thoughts. I think we have one more question after this, and I'm going to talk about that more in detail. That is a great question. Miss Fulro is saying, bougie with the lipsticks. Yes, yes. I, You know what? I got to spend my money on something, right? I like looking pretty. Not a good scenario today because I don't have the lipsticks on, but, you know, normally, you guys know uh both beautiful ladies yes carrie is gorgeous i know this one yay miss full roller okay shonda rhymes that's what miss full roller says i don't know miss full roller are you sure paulindo says melissa but am sorry shonda <laughs> paulindo has melissa on the brain brian says b shonda rhymes partly cloudy says at Jessica Hicks, much love. Hey, partly cloudy. Miss Will Roller says B. Cassandra says B. The woman who doesn't exist says B. Shonda Rhyme. Shonda is my shero. Mr. 100 Round says B. JMJ says B. And Barry Johnson is coming in here saying B. Yes, Shonda Rhymes on Thursday night. Hmm. Is it really Shonda Rhymes? I mean, do you guys really know? Let's see what the answer is in five, four, three, two, one. 
It is Miss Shonda Rhimes. So yes, I was one of the folks that would religiously watch Scandal. I watched a few episodes of Grey's Anatomy. I just couldn't get into it as much. Plus I was already on Scandal. And for me, I kind of do tunnel vision. Like I have what one show that I will watch and then I don't watch anything else until that's over. And then I'll pick something. Like I'm very much like, I just need the one. I just need the one thing. <laughs> I don't watch enough TV anyway. So just the one thing at a time, but it was definitely Scandal. Love that show, loved the show. I didn't think Olivia made the best choices. I would have picked otherwise. I was definitely team Jake for a long time for that show. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I would have chose wrong. I don't know. In the political world, who knows what I would have done. <laughs> wow, she looks stunning, so different. Yes, I picked a glam shot of her. Um, and I like this one. I loved it. She is gorgeous. I think a lot of the pictures that we see of her are just like random. And I'm like, what is this? What is this picture? I'm not throwing this up here. This is what happens when Black women own the media, which is, this is the media. So this is how I'm going to highlight us in the most beautiful light, right? Again, my favorite person in history said this. One of my favorite people in history. Actually, I don't know the exact quote, but they were basically saying that media is the most powerful. So if we can control our media, we can really do some things as a people. Just going to throw that out there. Now, I move on to the next. And I think the last question, and I have some facts after this. Wait, I'm, I stopped because of Ms. Forrell's comment. I got hooked on Scandal after the show had ended. Once I found out that it was a Black woman that produced it, I looked it up and everything I could about her. Okay, go Ms. Forrell. So you came in after. You know, sometimes it happens like that. I've definitely come in on shows where it's like season two, I just found out about it or someone shared with me and then I have to play catch up. And it was Netflix world. So you, you stream it and you get through the whole thing and then you're ready. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm definitely a part of that boat. Okay, so this person, this woman, after receiving her master's degree in marketing, this famous beauty influencer decided that she wanted to pursue a career in the beauty world. So what did she do? She first began her career freelancing and working at MAC. So MAC, the makeup. Uh, they have multiple stores like in Macy's and um, they have their own stores in places like New York and I'm assuming LA. But Working that job, she soon realized that being a makeup artist was not her passion. She actually wanted to do her own makeup, and she found an outlet to do that with YouTube. And so she became a very big YouTube influencer and still is. She now holds a net worth of $1.3 consistent with her YouTube and her YouTube ventures, different influencer marketing um, that she has done, and a lot of partnerships that she has in the beauty space. Now, am I talking about A, Ellery Noel, B, Patricia Bright, C, Jackie Ina, or D, Nima Tang? All right, am I talking about A, Ellery Noel, B, Patricia Bright, C, Jackie Ina, or D, Nima Tang? I see some responses. Let's see here. Hey, Peyton. Welcome to the session. Welcome to class. Paolindo is saying, hey. Okay, Paolindo says, hey, are you sure? Uh, Miss Four Roller, Shonda lost a lot of weight in this pic and glad she did. She is and always was beautiful. Yet, so many things are done when you lose weight. It's just so much better for you. I am really hoping that, what's her name? The girl that plays the flute? What's that girl's name? Uh, she had a lot of backlash because she was trying to lose weight and people got mad at her. But I'm like, no, she needs to lose weight. Like, congratulate her. Like, what? how do people get mad at people for making themselves better? Just because you want to stay looking crazy and unhealthy and whatever else. Don't get mad at someone else and they want to change their life for the better. <laughs> this is my take on it. Um, she's very much a thinker. Yes, and I know Paolo Lindo had said that earlier. 
Barry is saying C. Jackie Ina. Miss Full Roller is saying, I don't know that com on this one. I love when you say that, Miss Full Roller. <laughs> I took that for you because I went IDC.com. <laughs> Brian is saying A. Hmm. C. <laughs> Ms. Fuller is saying, hi to everybody. The woman who doesn't exist to you says C, Jackie Ina. Paola Lindo says, oh, I didn't know that. Peyton is saying, teacher, I hope Mark Thomas still resting. And going to go with everyone and guess C, Jackie Ina. And the woman who doesn't exist to you, thank you. Lizzo is who I'm talking to. You know, the girl that plays that flute and rap. She's super talented. But yes, I hope she loses that weight. Girl, you gotta lose that weight. Um, I mean, or not, but I mean, you're gonna be healthier. At some point, she's going to, she's gonna lose weight. That's just what people do is they get more income typically, especially for women. C from Cassandra. Okay, let's see what the answer is. I don't know about this one, guys. It is Ellery. <laughs> Ellery Noel. I didn't highlight her in green. I just missed over it, guys. I'm human. Oops. But Ella Ree is one of the first influencers I actually got started with watching. And her net worth, the estimates are different just case by case, but it's between one and 1.3 million. So I went with the higher number. Um, you'll see her with a lot of different brand deals like ColourPop and different ones. Um, but she's one of the biggest Insta or Instagram and YouTube famous black women in the industry. Now, before we go and end things out, and I will address the question about Bitcoin as well, I want to highlight these folks because everyone else in there, they're just phenomenal. And so let's talk about it. I'm going to talk about the numbers, which I had to write down because I wasn't going to remember. So on the left, or I don't know what you guys see because I think it's reversed, but in the green, with the, you know, sleek hairstyle here. At the top, we see Jackie Ina, who has a net worth of 1.5 million. So she, on a lot of estimates, is shown as the highest like ranking from just a money standpoint of how much money she's generating from YouTube and so many other brand deals. I mean, this girl is probably the biggest name when you think of makeup, which is why I think a lot of you guessed Jackie Ina. If you search for black women in the beauty industry or in the makeup industry, you're going to see Jackie Ina. She's a super transparent, easy type of personality, and she's stunning. Um, so I definitely want to highlight her. Patricia Bright, you will see her, especially if you're thinking about the UK. She is UK-based. Um, I want to say her background is Nigerian, um, but her last name is Bright because her husband is from London, like is of English, you know, background. So she is also a big one. She actually has two YouTube channels. She worked in the finance space and then just started hopping on YouTube and built an audience like way back in 2000, like 2010, 2011, 2012, right? And she also is in the millions of dollars with her net worth. At the bottom, you'll see Nima Tang, which the melanin, right? Melanin is popular on that one. So she is also stated to be at around close to or right around $1 million net worth. And then at the last one at the here with the blue eyes, which those are her real blue eyes, is Sydney Black. She is another uh, beauty influencer that's been on YouTube for quite a while. I think it's been like four years, four or five years. And her net worth is seen between the one and five million different estimates, depending on where you go. So wanted to highlight those women and um, just put a spotlight there. But that closes out our trivia. Thank you guys for watching. Now, I do want to get before I go into uh, the question I got from the woman who doesn't exist. And I wanna look at some of the comments in here. Let me see. Yes, Lizzo, Lizzo needs to lose that weight. Thank you, thank you. Gotta handle a few things, stay doing your thing. Queen, I'll catch the replay, keep the info coming. Oh, thank you, Mr. 100 Rounds. Um, Ms. Roller says, because 
they want to keep you in a box. In other words, the crab mentality is why folks get mad at others for, mm -hmm, for bettering themselves. Yes. And it's interesting because Lizzo has a really big following that are white women. So she has a lot of white women supporting her. Um, and then people that are of that BB, what is it, BBW community. And so I guess they felt like it was a slap in the face that she had been singing for a long time. You know, big is beautiful and I can do everything that thin women can do. But then she starts losing weight. So it's kind of that, um, you know, if, if you were said that you were beautiful for a long time because you were a white woman, for example, but then everybody just switched up and said, nope, you're not beautiful. We like, we like the black woman now. <laughs> Bye. So it kind of felt like a slap in the face for them. So I think that's where it came from, unfortunately. So not really caring about her, more about them you know like what does this mean for me like you know i want to feel good that's why i listen to your music i want to feel good about myself right um paulino said epic fail <laughs> oh my goodness um thank you miss four roller for uh speaking to mr 100 rounds before i got to him i think he's already gone now barry death says wow jackie Ina is worth 1.5 million she worked for Matt. Yeah, so I think a lot of the beauty influencers worked for Mac. Yeah. And they just branched out on their own. So it's, it's it's phenomenal, right? And I think a lot of people are mad about it because you can now build your own um, I guess community and make a business off of it. You don't need these big brands as much. They kind of need them now, right? Mac needs her to push products. So you like gotta treat all your people right because you just never know. Oh, Paola no, was making eyes. Do you love Ella Rie too? She is gorgeous as well. Oh, and I did wanna do this and kind of highlight some of the things we talked about. I'm gonna talk about Bitcoin and then I'm gonna do a quick highlight. Um, I know very little about the makeup folks and makeup in general. Really, Miss Full Roller? I gotta say, you have some great skin. So I was always questioning like what your beauty routine was. Might just be natural, might just be the melanin, who knows? Hey, Zero, those are some beautiful women you got up there. <laughs> Should I bring them back? <laughs> I know, and then I'm like, look at these beautiful women. And I'm like, oh, hey, here I am in my like casual whatever attire. Um, <laughs> Helena says, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I am gonna bring back, well, let me know if you're still in here. Uh, the woman who doesn't exist. If you're still in here, put a little comment in the chat so I know, and then let's talk Bitcoin. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on if you, if you have student loan debt right now and you want to invest, whether it's Bitcoin or whatever else, right? So we'll, you can talk about it, but just let me know you're in here because I don't want to be talking to myself. I can always address that in another video. And while I'm looking for her, basically what we were talking about during this whole trivia, what we learned is, let's see if I can highlight it. Okay. So these are some of the things that we looked at. My screen shows. Okay. So this is what we walked through today. We looked at well, if it goes. Okay, so we looked at the Nigerian royalty and those that stem from Nigeria. So we talked about Garcelle, who starred in the Jamie Foxx show. She is of Haitian descent, right? And then we talked about the um, woman who was. Uh, made queen right after Haiti got the, their independence, which was Marie Louise Christophe, wife of Henry the First, one of the original fighters and um, supporters of, you know, I guess the revolution, what you could call it. So independence in 1804. And then we talked about, okay, the woman who doesn't exist is here. Okay. We talked about Olive, who was the princess imperial of Haiti. Then we brought it to Nigeria. We talked about Insecure, 
and one of the women who actually has been nominated for multiple awards in that show, Yvonne Orji of Nigerian descent. We talked about Agbani Dorego, who is the first African, indigenous African to win Miss World in 2001, right? And then we talked about the Nigerian billionaire businesswoman um, in multiple industries, including fashion, Polarunso Alakija. We talked about Nyongzi Akonjo Awelia, who is the director general of the World Trade Organization, the most powerful woman in Africa. We moved over to the corporate space. We learned that BIPOC is for black, indigenous, and other people of color. And this is really what you're gonna see as the acronym used throughout the world. In the US, we're still using people of color, POC. WOC and MOC, you might see just saying women of color and men of color. So WOC or MOC, you may also see. A lot of times you're not gonna see just people saying non-white, and you may sometimes just see the word minority, non-minority as well, unfortunately. We learned about Miss Beatrice Dixon, who started Honey Pot. We learned about Melissa Butler, who started the company The Lip Bar. We talked about Shonda Rhimes, who rules Hollywood. <laughs> we talked about Ella Marie Noel, who is one of the millionaire beauty influencers in the Black community. And then we also talked about Jackie Ina, Patricia Bright, Nima Tang, who is the is the most melanated woman on the screen. Her skin is just so gorgeous. And we talked about Sydney Black, and in fact, those are her real blue eyes, but she is also one of our billion, or millionaire influencers. All right, so let's address the topic of Bitcoin and investing when you have student debt, because I did see that my lady is in here. So the woman who doesn't exist to you when you're thinking about student loan debt, I would consider this. So, all right, so right now, if you're in the US, right, there's no, you're not paying interest on your debt right now. Not until I believe it's fall of next year is what the um, decree was that Biden put, he kind of extended what Trump had already put in place, saying you don't have to pay your student loans uh, right now. And I don't believe the interest is occurring on those student loans, right? It's kind of like they're just frozen. I would, if you have any disposable income, I would use that to put towards any investments that you would like to, because when you don't have to pay interest on your debt, that in fact makes it a positive for you to put your money elsewhere. Now, it depends on the amount of money of student loan debt. I'm putting myself in your shoes. So this is not investment advice. This is just me thinking about if I were in your case. So let's say I had 10,000 in a student loan debt. I would consider that and weigh the benefit of investing my money somewhere where I can get a, I don't know, five, 10%, really any type of return on that money. So it, you're in a place where debt is frozen and you can actually invest. I would invest your disposable income. So let's say you have 50 bucks at the end of the week, 100 bucks at the end of the week that you're just like, I don't need it. It's not in my budget. I can just use it for whatever. I could use it to buy shoes or extra makeup or whatever. That's the money that I would use for investing. When it comes to Bitcoin, I do invest in Bitcoin, but I also started investing 2017. So like shortly after I got into a job and like things felt pretty established, I started investing outside of my 401k. So I have my 401k, then I started investing just to kind of get exposure to the market. I was still learning. And I would say, I mean, I didn't, I have a couple of different investments account now, but thinking back to when I first got started, I would just put in, I think at the time it was a hundred dollars a month. And that's what I could afford, right? So, I mean, <laughs> that's my advice it will grow. You're going to see it go up and down, especially when it comes to Bitcoin. So I would just be very comfortable with seeing your money go from like, I don't know, a thousand dollars to a hundred dollars to 5,000 to 2,000 to, you know, 10,000 to 7,000, 25,000, 15,000. So that's kind of the Bitcoin roller coaster. 
it can go up, it can go down, and it happens very quickly. As opposed to like the stock market, it does move quickly, but it's just not as it's not as much movement in general, unless there's like some, let's say something happened, let's say Biden passed away. I'm not saying that he, you know, I mean, he's 70, what, 77? It could happen. Let's say he passed away. Well, you know, because there's uncertainty. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? It's going to go up and down. With Bitcoin, you don't know. It could be, I don't know. Elon Musk could be like, he could tweak coin or he could tweak bit or he could tweak Bitcoin emoji. I don't know. And the price would go up or he could put negative sign Bitcoin. It could go down because it's just how people interpret it. Businesses are moving it. People are moving it. It's just it's just crazy space. So a long way to tell you, you know, invest in your own risk, but really weigh the benefits right now and make the use of the fact that, you know, it's pretty much frozen. You don't have to pay it. Now, if you have private student debt, that's a whole another story because I don't think those payments are frozen. I don't know if that helps. Uh, let me see here. Hi Zed, the gummy bear dream. <laughs> I love that name. Oh my gosh, Zed, the gummy bear dream. Oh my goodness. That just sounds so cute and cuddly. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Fuller says, I'm interested in your thoughts on her question as well. I'm fully in the get rid of debt camp before anything else. Really? Wait, Ms. Fuller, you have debt? What? How did I not know this? Are you, but do you have student loan debt or do you have like mortgage debt? Because Ms. Fuller, like, I was watching your stuff. Um, I just like how to save money and all this stuff. Um, I, like one day I just like streamed everything. I was just like, oh my goodness, she's got tips on everything. And they were older videos. I was just like, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> but um, ah, that's my thoughts. That's pretty much my thoughts right now. Surprisingly, there were a lot of free black people in France back then. Yes, for sure. A lot of black people traveled to France um, to get their freedom and to live a better life. Yes. Uh, Biden don't know what he put in place. <laughs> oh my gosh, Zero, stop. <laughs> you know, okay, so I'll be honest with you guys. Sometimes I do wonder, I like literally just think, I'm like, is that man completely there? Like, is he, like, who is running this country right now? Because before folks were saying Trump's not running the country, um, he doesn't get it. But I mean, I will say this about Trump. He was, he was pretty sharp. Like he could come at you and like, <laughs> uh, he wasn't, I won't say he was the brightest, right? Um, but he was sharp. He was reading or at least I hope he was, um, he appeared to be reading a lot of material. So it wasn't just like signing saying, what is this? And signing it anyway. He did, he seemed to want the context of stuff that he was signing. But when it comes to Biden, I do wonder, I'm like, does he know what he's doing? Like, what is, I, sometimes I think there's a teleprompter and they're just like, here, say this. This is what we need to say. <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, Ms. Roller says, and if you don't have any emergency fund, ooh, yes, good point, Ms. Roller. That needs to be addressed first. But debt elimination definitely before investing, employment and investment returns are brought. Yes, Ms. Roller, you brought up a great point. I hope the woman who doesn't exist is still in here. When you're investing, you definitely need to have an emergency fund in place first. I um, actually kind of did it a little bit backward. I had a very small emergency fund. Like, I think I had like a thousand to fifteen hundred in my emergency fund at the time. Again, this is a few years ago when I was just getting started. But I do wish I had built up a better uh, emergency fund. Not that I took out money for my uh, investments or anything, but I think about what could have happened. Right? What could have gone wrong where I would have needed to, you know, or been tempted to go into uh, my investments, which is something you don't want to do. You want to look at the long term and give it that opportunity to grow five to 10 years out. And so 
but now what I do have, I do have an emergency fund. It's like three to six months of just my regular expenses. And then I continue investing. So I'm just working the plan. I follow Dave Ramsey. If you need someone to give just a little advice in that space of debt, he has a totally different take on it though. I used to follow his tips until I was like, I was just like, I can invest invest my money and get a better return on it while I can versus just shoveling everything. So I have just a little bit of student loan debt is under 10,000. I had it in a place where I was like, yeah, I'm just going to shift this money there. But right when I was about to shift my money to pay off the rest of the student loan, the whole pandemic happened. And I was like, no way. I need to hold on to this money and just keep it here <laughs> until like, we figure out what's going on. And then following that, it was like, okay, well, if we don't have the interest and it's pretty much in a place where it's frozen, why should I pay back the student loan right now? What I can do is just continue saving, hold on to it, see if the economy gets better, uh, like 2021, 2022, 22 is what I was thinking then I can go ahead and shovel that money on over like I was thinking originally. Why not get some return on it, you know, put in a high interest savings account like Ally is what I use and some of these other platforms, like I use M1 Finance, like a lot of different ones to really build the money versus just having it sit. And so Bitcoin is probably the one place that's, it's kind of like, so it's called digital gold, right? Um, there's a lot of skeptics out there, but I do feel like it's a better place to put the money because mine has like, I mean, I put money in there in like November last year and it's grown exponentially from there, but I do know that it can go down. So I'm there for the long haul. I will continue funneling money there as we go along, just because if it does blow up, I want to be there. I want to see what happens. I want to definitely not be one of those folks that was like, oh, I wish I had done this back in 2020, you know, um, like the folks that are like, oh, I wish I had invested in Bitcoin back in 2000, I don't know, 2015 or whatever. Uh, I think it, a lot of people didn't really know about it in 2010, 2009, we didn't really know about it, but it did become more mainstream 2014, 2015, 2016. It's when I first started hearing about it, at least. Let's see if there are any other comments in here. <laughs> Zero says there are teleprompters, Jessica. Uh, the president never runs the country. They are just puppets. I I do think that as well. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Zero. Forex to me has more flexibility with low investment. I am thinking about Forex. Um, I just need to I just need to do more education on it. I don't jump into investing unless I'm educated on it. So with Bitcoin, I read not all, but I did read some of the white paper. And even with Ethereum, I read some of the white paper and I was like, and I even joined some um, Clubhouse chats just so I could learn about it a little bit more. Cause I was like, I need to, I need to know what I'm getting into. I don't want to just jump into it because a bunch of tech guys. And actually one of my friends was like in November was like, you need to buy Bitcoin right now. <laughs> just like, and he's one, he's pretty smart as far as investing. Uh, he has a degree in finance. And I was just like, great. Another thing I need to invest in. Um, let me figure this out first. And so I did some reading and I jumped in and was like, yeah, put some money in there. The only regret I have at this point is I wish I had put even more in there at the time. But thinking about I did this, I did the right thing. I put the disposable income I had into there. So and I'll keep doing it. I even talked to a cousin of mine who invests in Bitcoin. He seems solid. He works in IT space. Very smart guy. So just talk to people. Be sure to talk to folks before you jump in. The thing with Forex, though, and Bitcoin, just don't be scammed. Don't have someone come to you saying, I can help you invest in Bitcoin. I can help you invest in Forex. No, you can do it yourself. You can go on the platforms. There's Binance, there's Coinbase. There, well, Binance, if you're not in the US, Coinbase, there's um, what, Gemini. There's so many platforms you can invest in Bitcoin yourself. Please do not let anyone come to you. I actually had one, I shared them on my Instagram. And I was just like, these, 
Bitcoin scammers are getting crazy. And I would, it was like a bot, I think, but it had like a normal picture on there. You go to the Facebook page, they've got content, but there's no likes or it's like one other person liking and them. And it's like, okay, that's suspicious. And then also just how they come across. So I would literally message them back. Cause like, oh, do you want to get started? I'd be like, cool. And I'd send it. And then they'd be like, here are the amounts. You can invest this much and you get this much. And I went, cool. And then they talk more and more. It's like, this is ridiculous. Because I was trying to figure out if I was talking to a real person, like, will they change up their speech if I just write cool? They didn't. So there's a lot of bots and scammers out here. So just be careful. That's all, I, that's all I'm trying to say. Not trying to sway you, but just do your due diligence. Zero says, me and my best friend talked about this. And he told me that I need at least um, 10000 to start investing in cryptocurrency. No, you don't. Um, I mean... It depends. So with when you start talking about crypto, the one of the really positives of Bitcoin is that it can be broken down by so much. So you can actually buy Satoshis. Like you could buy 100,000 Satoshis and that would be equivalent to, I don't know, maybe $100. I don't know what the exact estimate is, but you can actually, there are calculators that will convert your US dollars or whatever currency you're trying to, you know, put into, will translate that to Bitcoin and then translate that to Satoshis. Because I mean, let's be honest, there's a limit on how many Bitcoin you can actually purchase. There's a percentage of the population that doesn't even remember the key to their Bitcoin or they don't know the password or whatever. There's this uh, guy that's been going on uh, these different media outlets saying, I have like, billion dollars in Bitcoin, I can't get to it because I don't remember my password. Just like, <laughs> oops. <laughs> but you have cases like that where that is that's still there, that Bitcoin is never going to move and it's just not going to be in circulation. As opposed to money where we just, you know, we just print more. So it's very interesting. And that's the value. That's part of the value of the Bitcoin is the fact that you it has that supply and demand, like there is a limited supply. So if it continues to be this increase in demand, you see companies like Tesla, um, MicroStrategy, buy more Bitcoin. Well, there's not going to be as much in circulation that you can even get. So there are going to be people that will only have, what, Satoshis. They're not going to have a full Bitcoin or even half a Bitcoin. Or even, I just saw a video where it was talking about if you own 0.01% of Bitcoin, you're going to be a millionaire. I don't know if that's true, but you know, a lot of people have these different estimates on it and it's not based on even just solely owning, owning one or two or three Bitcoins. The woman who doesn't exist says, I have emergency fund plus a lot of disposable income. Okay, go. Yeah. Okay. Well then use that disposable income and invest it. Um, and just put a plan together. Even if you wanted to, because there's no extremes here. You don't have to do one or the other. You could always put a designated amount to your uh, student loan, right? And you could put a designated amount of your disposable income into investing. It just all depends on how you want to break out your um, budgeting and then what your specific goals are. And I think I remember you saying you're a millennial. So as a millennial, I would always recommend investing. Because, I mean, 10 years moves by pretty fast in my eyes. So in 10 years from now, are you going to be happier having just your student loans paid down and then no time period where your money has been able to grow? Or do you want to have some investments as well and have your student loans paid down? Or even maybe it'll be paid off, but you're just splitting it up. You're... You know, you're trying to make the best use of your time because investing, that's kind of the benefit. You, The more time you have, the longer it has to grow, the more it can grow. Ms. Barola was saying an emergency fund is extremely important, especially if you're still in debt. I did a combination of Dave Ramsey's methods and others. Yeah, I so I like Dave Ramsey. I think he's a great start to get you thinking in the right mindset. But I wouldn't say his program works for every single person. I mean, I think it's great, but it it's it's a little inflexible. Like again, it's like on that extreme of 
you have to do this. <laughs> this is the only way. Like you do this, then you do this, and you have to do it in this order. Um, and I think there's benefits to doing it in the way that he suggests, like emergency fund of $1,000 and then pay off all the debt, it's at the house, uh, start investing, pay down the mortgage, whatever. Um, however, I just don't know. I just, if you're missing out on years and years. So here's the thing. Like, I think for him, it's just really about you need to be gung-ho, eating rice and beans, <laughs> not even living life until you pay off this debt. But here's the other part of that. Okay, look at what we're in right now, pandemic, where we can't travel. So what if I had never traveled anywhere because I was paying down this debt and living like a college student eating ramen noodles the whole time? <laughs> You know, and now we're in this place where literally you, you if you want to go to Italy right now, it's going to be tough for you. And you're going to be it's just a different type of experience. You can. But what's your mindset going to be? Are you going to feel safe? What do you have to go through to get there? It's just different. Uh, Zero said, Miss Four Roller, don't act like you didn't see that video where old Joe said, I don't know what I'm saying or I don't know what I'm signing actually got hit by fat checkers that gave me a terrible reason for taking it down. <laughs> I saw that video, Zero. <laughs> I was like, what? It was kind of like, you just rewind it or you um, take it back and you're like, what? What? <laughs> what do you mean you don't know what you're signing? Don't sign it then. What, what are you doing? <sighs> and that's the, okay, so that's the other thing. I think some of the politicians get a bad rap because they don't just sign these deals. But what the average person, I think a lot of times don't, doesn't understand is that yes, it could be a bill that says, we're gonna give these $1,400 stimulus checks. However, here's the downside of it is that there's a lot of bills attached to that one. So it's like a great medium in this political game to go, okay, we both want this. Well, you're only gonna get this if we put all this other stuff in there. So we're gonna help the immigrants. We're gonna um, send this money to China. We're gonna send this money to, um, I don't know. They're not sending money to Africa, I don't think. We're gonna send this money to Brazil. And then we're gonna do this for the lesbian and trans in this community and then this community. And it's just like, if we wanted to pass it with just the bill, I think it would have went smoother and it would have happened quicker. The issue is with these bills, you have all this other trash along with it. So it's like, let's say partly cloudy. I was like, hey, I know you need some money right now. Um, I'm going to give you $10,000, okay? I'm going to give you $10,000 just out of my stash. I'm going to give you this money. And you're like, okay. And all you got to do is just sign this paper. And I got you, okay? I got you. I got you get $10,000, no questions asked. You just get this money, right? You never have to pay it back. I'm just taking that out of my stash. But you start reading it, you start reading all the paperwork. I'm just saying, sign here, sign here. But it says in there, you have to be my personal slave for the next 10 years. You gotta do everything I tell you. You gotta be on my back and you gotta be back and call for me. I call you up, you gotta be there. You gotta work on whatever I tell you to do, no matter, no questions asked, you're doing it partly cloudy. But I'm just telling you to sign right here. Sign right here. You get this $10,000, right? That's kind of the political game. You get all this trash attached to it. So you're in a place, partly Kylie, where you're like, man, I need this money, but I got to be your personal slave for 10 years. <laughs> right? So that is the part where I think a lot of people get upset that folks aren't just signing these bills. But that's where the negotiation comes in because it's like, okay, you got to take this out and then we'll sign it. Well, no, we want this. Well, how about you just adjust it and only do this? So they're doing all of this little scheming stuff to get some of their policies in place <laughs> that they want, right? And instead of just addressing this particular issue, they have to go, oh, but this is our chance to get everything else we want. Uh, Ms. Four Roller saying, I have no regrets, no regrets about not investing, but instead focusing on being 100% debt free. Been almost 15 years now. Oh, that's awesome, Ms. Four Roller. I, I mean, it just depends on your personal goals for sure. 
see where the infinite says i know exactly what you were referring to that's why i was <laughs> that's why you're laughing miss full roller banks didn't want people investing in cryptocurrency i wish i had the money to invest back then yeah a lot of people were just trashing cryptocurrency warren buffett is still one that's saying uh that he doesn't like it he does he would not invest in it but here's the thing warren buffett i was telling my mom this he also said that about the tech industries and we saw them like skyrocket and you know grow so he doesn't he doesn't invest in what he doesn't understand which is fair but i mean don't tell everybody else not to invest plus a lot of these business people and billionaires they're probably investing on the sly they're just telling you not to invest because they want it all you, you just never know <laughs> Uh, woman who doesn't exist. Thank you, Miss Full Roller. Zero saying, yeah, I was like Joe, just got in, just got in, and he's already messing up. <laughs> we never look. Every president that gets in there, we're never happy. I mean, you can't make everyone happy anyway. But I, I'm not. I can't say I'm a fan of Joe. I know he ran with Obama and all of that, but he just, I don't. I personally don't really like Democrats anyway, so I don't like any of them. So, uh, minimum is $100. No, guys, the minimum to invest. So normally if you're starting a brokerage account, I think certain ones don't have a minimum. Others have like a $100 minimum. And then for crypto, you can invest like, I think you can invest $5. You can even use Cash App to invest. I haven't used Cash App myself, but I know people are doing it. Um, but you can use Coinbase as well. And you can buy like $5 at a time. You do have to pay fees depending on what site you're at. So that's the downside. But it's like a fee of a dollar. It's kind of similar to when you had to, I don't know, open like an E-Trade account or something and they charge a fee per trade, like $4.95 per trade. It's kind of like that before Robinhood came around and said, no fees y'all, come on over. <laughs> and then all the other companies had to follow suit because they were losing customers. Zero says, it's always good to create a system that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yep, you have to personalize it because I can say what I'm doing, but for my personal goals, it, it makes sense. But then for, other, for another person, they might not be comfortable with doing it my way. So you just gotta find your own, and you can always change it. You can do something for a year and say, this isn't working, or you can do something for three months. And you're like, this isn't working, I don't like it. You can change. I think just constantly changing. I talked about this in a video. Who moved the cheese? You just got to con continue moving. If it doesn't work, try something else. Some, I mean, some things fail, but that's okay because we're, we're growing. That's just a part of the growth process. Miss Four Roller said, yep, I rarely follow anyone's method 100%. I have to define it for myself. That is a very smart way to go. Miss Four Roller is just a worth of a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. So I would definitely, I would go with any advice she's putting in the chat. <laughs> the woman who doesn't exist says both. I'm trying to pay it all out of my student loans. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'll definitely be sharing more. I'm kind of a zealot when it comes to being debt free because the freedom it has been amazing. I will agree with that. Like I know a lot of people have car notes and car payments and like just not having a lot of that stuff is so nice. It's so freeing for sure. Zero said all in about freedom. So guys, I will be doing a video. It's a topic I want to, I've been wanting to discuss for a while. I think I'm going to name the title of it. Slavery never went anywhere or something like that. But I basically want to talk about how we as a people in general were enslaved still like slavery never went anywhere it just changed the name on it so i will be talking about that in an upcoming video is that the gummy bear dream which again i love this name it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy <laughs> um is that the gummy bear dream teacher sarah mark is not home right now what Miss Four Roller, that's that one's for you. Uh, what we can do, give him the facts so he can come back and say he didn't know. He will have to live with the consequences. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and don't forget to hit the like button if you're in here. 
Uh, Zero says, I don't like Democrats either, especially after I had volunteered at the state Democratic Party office a little bit after Obama became president. Ah. Yes, Zero. Um, I just did a video, actually, where I talk about why millennials are suffering the most. Um, I talk a little bit more about my background and just experience as a millennial, but yes, I am a millennial. Sure am. I am 100% a millennial, 90s baby. So, yep. Um, I think I covered everything in this video, at least the topics that, for discussion. So really great chit chat. You guys know these trivia Sundays, Saturdays. I'm just chill chit chats. I will be posting more content. I think this week might be a little bit light for me just because I to be transparent, I need to get my hair done. I'm not doing another video until I get my hair done. So <laughs> a little vain reason, but yeah, I, I need my hair done. So, and I've been like doing workouts and stuff. So you know how that goes. It's, you know, the hair just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because, you know, under the flat iron is curly hair, right? So Afro hair. So yeah, I need to get, need to get the silk press and then I will start recording a video. I still might share a video this week. I just need to think about it. Depends on how I feel. And I do want to get back to advice videos because I had a consultation on Friday where I did a mock interview with a, um, with a girl, lovely young lady. And I asked her like, you know, what kind of content is most helpful for you? She likes the jobs updates, but she also said the advice videos are pretty helpful for her. So I will be getting back to that and doing some of those like job quick tips, advice videos. Hopefully those will be like four or five minutes. I don't like those to be long. And then I'll continue doing the, hey, who's hiring type of videos too. So if you ever have ideas about content or if you just want to provide me feedback, let me know for real. Like I am, I'm never going to be like, ugh. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear that. Tell me good things only. If you have ideas that will improve the channel or different subjects I should be talking about, please do let me know. I'm always open to hear them either in YouTube, chat, or even on Instagram. I know we're all connected on Instagram, I think. So, yeah. Um, we look at some of the last comments here. Uh, Zed, the Gummy Bear Dream, says, Teacher, Sarah Mark Thomas just got back and he's trying to run to the bed but i see him uh-oh we're telling on somebody miss furrow says absolutely slavery has just taken a different form and still although many don't realize that they are slaves right and slaves in so many ways right we don't even have our time we don't really control anything i i was talk about this in a video but i was listening to a podcaster talking about how the world economic forum said by 2030 you will own nothing and be happy about it. So it makes you think about the content that we have. Do we own anything? I will tell you for myself, I, um, as far as movies, we used to own movies, we used to own games, we used to own music, like physical copies of things, and now we don't. Uh, when I went to New York, a girl that I first met, very lovely lady, but she worked at a PR agency, was very much in the fashion, and she did rent the runway, where you rent your clothes and you send it back. You rent these different pieces, you send it back. And I'm like, man, people are out here renting their clothes? They don't even own clothes? Like, what? what is happening, <laughs> right? Like, we don't own a specific thing. So if Netflix shut down, Amazon, all of these different things shut down, we won't have content. The internet goes down. You music because we're streaming it constantly through YouTube, Spotify, I don't know, what are the other ones? Apple Music. And we're at a place where we're we're happy that we don't own it. We're paying to not own it. <laughs> Literally. Versus just buying it outright, you know? And maybe saving it. It's it's gotten it's gotten tough. It's it's crazy to even think about. Zero says, I heard that there are two ways to enslave people. One is servitude and the other is debt. Well, that's where slavery a lot of cases started. Yeah, for sure. People were in debt to someone, so you had to essentially become their slave, right? Their indentured servant 
to pay off your debt. Yeah, definitely zero. Oh, thank you, Miss Full Roller. You are so sweet and kind. I appreciate it. But you know, I I hold myself to a certain standard when it comes to my look, and I just I just don't feel it. You know, that's why I haven't been really putting a ton of videos out where I'm just showing my face. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> like this. <laughs> So I do practice what I preach there. I tell people when they're interviewing, you want to look your best and feel your best. That's kind of how I am on camera. Now, I feel fine today, but I just know when I go to the salon, it looks a lot better. And I feel a little bit better about it. But I thank you for that, Miss Full Roller. Um, Zero said, uh oh, Jessica's getting a fro. <laughs> so for my last year, my birthday video, that was about, that was like, medium like it was just starting to become a fro um i had did like a braid out just to kind of keep it at bay a little bit but that new york humidity my hair was like um we're ready to be wild <laughs> it is time we are free my hair was saying free at last <laughs> um miss Worrell says i'm learning that owning less is more I do like the minimalism. New York taught me minimalism for real. I thought I was a minimalist coming from Missouri and I was definitely not. <laughs> I had way too many. I mean, I just had stuff on top of stuff. It's like, why? And New York really showed me how you can really be a minimalist. So I brought a little bit of that to Texas. <sighs> not as much as I could be, but it's, it's kind of a journey for me, so. I would love to talk more about that, Miss Four Roller. And hopefully you do more, like some videos about that, like recent videos too. So I love your older like content about just money and, you know, ways that you can save and ways that you can um, even earn money, like in different ways. Like I would love that type of stuff. And that stuff is super popular on here. Uh, Zed is saying, yes, teacher, Sarah, he just got back into bed and should say, um, so Zed is talking to Miss Four Roller. Zero is saying, I hear some black people saying that indentured servitude isn't slavery. Shake my head. You know what? Some people are just, they just need to come into the light. Just come into the light. <laughs> I mean, there, here's the thing. There's no one. There's not necessarily a one definition of slavery. For example, women that are bought, like kidnapped, bought, sold, that is slavery, right? That never went anywhere. Slavery never went anywhere. Men and women that are in prison and they're being forced to work to make things and those items are getting sold and they get nothing for it. That is slavery when you're in debt and you can only like you can't say i don't want to work at a job otherwise you're just you're not going to be able to pay these folks and you could go to prison <laughs> that is a form of slavery so you don't have your time you don't have that freedom that's all it's about is freedom that's what slavery you know you look at this country and our ancestors um a lot of different ancestors because you have people that don't are not black and they've been enslaved. Jewish people have been enslaved. Irish people have been enslaved. Different European people have been, their family come from slaves. It's just a different type of, it's just different how you look at it, right? It's just a different form of slavery. So it's sad to hear that, I mean, it's just the education because if you sit back and think about things, when you have more time to sit back and think about things, you do realize that people are still enslaved. But that's the thing. A lot of people, the poorer you are, the less time you really have to think. And then when you do have time when you're not working, you're spending time watching TV. And you're not thinking when you're watching TV. You have to sit back, take a walk, read a book, sit, do yoga, meditate, just sit in silence and think about things or just observe things. Go to a coffee shop. Just look at what people are doing. I love people watching. I used to do that in New York sometimes, like going to Central Park and just watching people or like in the Starbucks and just kind of watching people. 
that's not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> but seeing and observing what people are doing on a day to day, that's how you learn. We don't learn from sitting in front of a TV. And I hate that there are people that do that literally every day, all day. Um, hold up. When was your birthday, Jessica? So my birthday is coming up in May, but I had a birthday last year since it was right in the middle of the pandemic where I just got on the live and I was like, happy birthday to me. <laughs> and my YouTube community here just helped me celebrate my birthday. I had a, it was a tough, tough birthday, man. It was a tough birthday. But yes, I am a May baby. <laughs> Ms. Laurel says, yes, all of it is a journey. Yes, I do plan on doing videos. My debt elimination process that I've talked about. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize you had a blog. I have a, I gotta like spend some more time on your channel, Miss Full Roller. So if you're in a chat and you haven't checked out Miss Full Roller, please do. Um, I'll look out for the videos and I will share them too. Like, and hold me to it. Like, tell me in case I forget. Like, Jessica, you gonna share this video? I don't take offense to anything like that, <laughs> but that would be great. And that's a hot topic because a lot of people are just trying to figure out what to do money wise. Zed, you write teacher. He can tell me he was hungry. Zed is dealing with a lot of stuff right now. <laughs> Zero says what history doesn't talk about is that people of different races were on plantations as well. Not just black people. Yes. People don't talk about even the natives. You know what's, um, because people talk about black people and how we sell things and then a lot of times others come from come into the community and they you know make it grow and i saw this documentary on the history channel where they were talking about new york and manhattan and how some dutch settler bought manhattan <laughs> from the natives for $25 or $24 or something. And now it's, you know, worth billions of dollars, this island of Manhattan. And it's like a lot of people have done it, right? And, but the fact that they're saying they, they bought it. I'm like, yeah, they bought it. Right, that sounds right. Just a lot of history that you question, right? It's like, okay, uh -huh, sure. Uh, if you have to answer to someone that says what time you have to be somewhere or that you mm -hmm, or that you have to spend your time to do something, pay for bills, etc., you are like exactly, exactly. I 100% agree with that, Miss Full Roller. Uh, people think there was no beatings, then it's not slavery. <laughs> wow. I don't think people understand what freedom is. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. That's crazy. Uh, okay. So the woman who doesn't exist to you will be your next top of writing slaves. So I, I don't know what I'm going to title it, but I'm just going to say slavery doesn't exist or something, or we're still slaves or I'll figure out a creative title, but I definitely want to talk more about that because it's true. Miss Full Roller is totally right. It's like we switch from one form of slavery over to another one. Zero the Infinite said, I didn't know you had a blog. Yeah, Miss Furroller, I didn't know either. Miss Furroller just casually, she like mic drop. <laughs> yeah, on my blog. It's like, what? <laughs> what blog? Yes, I do. I haven't written in five years. LOL. The link is on my page. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, check out the blog if you're interested in those great topics. And Zero says a lot of the black ancestors were black people, but they tell us that we came from Africa automatically with no real proof. Yeah, like I, I kind of wish we would just talk about ourselves as indigenous people. Because I mean, we're black people, our people, we're everywhere, right? Um, and in this country, there are black people. We'll talk about that. Uh, they don't, Jessica. Yeah, right. We don't. Uh, Jessica, you're going to anger the pro-blacks. <laughs> um, that's fine. I, look, if anyone comes to me with anger, I'm going to be like, peace, love. <laughs> you're going to be angry at yourself. You're going to be getting angry and um, arguing with yourself. And I'm going to be over here like, uh-huh, yeah, peace, love, bye. <laughs> 
Uh, let me see. Anyways, teacher, Sarah, I locked the windows and I locked his room door. <laughs> Zero, folks who think, oh, like that don't want to have to face the atrocities of their ancestors' behavior that is baked into the system. Oh my gosh, there's so much. We're going to have a really good discussion about that, guys. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, I really got to figure out that name. You know what? Pandy is really good at like creating different things. So I'm going to spend some time to think about it. But be ready for it. It'll be on my... It'll. I'll probably have to do a live just so I can kind of engage with folks. I don't think it'll be a pre-recorded video. So keep an eye out for it. And then of course, more advice videos on just tips on interviewing, job seeking, resume writing, all that stuff. Then my weekly jobs alert update as well. If you haven't checked out my last video, my short five minute one, it's just me and my um, prior coworker working at home. So if you wanna check that one out or if you like pets, you may like that one. And then I think that is, oh, I will be doing a follow-up to the millennial discussion. So I will be doing that next Saturday. If you want to follow that discussion, as mentioned before, we talked a lot about the economics. I'm going to be talking about the economics. And then we're going to have a discussion as well on the economic and mental state of millennials. So if you're interested in that, you're interested in having that conversation, we'll talk about it. We'll probably also talk about other generations and kind of do some comparison as well. And of course, you know, black people, women, black women will be in that discussion. And then for the month of March, I will continue highlighting women, uh, most likely continuing to highlight black women and Probably after March, I don't know if I'll continue the trivia unless I really get folks that say they like it and they want me to continue. I don't know if I'll continue the trivia or just have a discussion. We'll see. So more to come on that. But at least for the month of March, you'll know it's going to be all about women trivia. So we're going to be learning together. Uh, yes, many of us are Indigenous in North America. Exactly. Exactly, Ms. Full Roller. Yeah, so definitely gotta check out your coworker video. <laughs> I love cats. Yes! He, that one is adorable. Hopefully you like it. If you have tips on that video, like, because I know people have short attention spans and it is five minutes, let me know, Ms. Full Roller. I'm always open to advice. And with that, I am at two hours here. I need to go because I need to go take a walk before it starts getting dark. So I'm going to say goodbye to you lovely people. Thank you guys so much for the great discussion. And I will see you guys in a next either live chat or my next video. And be sure to leave a comment if you check out my last video about my former coworker um, that you'll see is that five minute video. Definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Haven't done a vlog in a while, but it's definitely one of those fun vlog style videos. And with that, I will let you guys go. Have a lovely Saturday. Peace. Love. <laughs> and um, thank you all for being here. Bye.